So Boris Johnson has played a hand, a card as it were. The card is, remove the damn backstop. There is no prospect of a deal unless it is dropped. That is what he has said. He believes that the EU is being negative over the backstop demands. There were a number of pictures and articles circulating of Boris leaving Brussels and Barnier with his feet up on a hammock. Now, of course, I don't think those pictures were taken around the same time. It is more than likely that Barnier was in the bathroom crapping himself. Donald Tusk has said that it is an insurance to avoid a hard border on the island of Ireland. I tend to disagree. The government has said it will stop attending meetings with the EU from September the 1st, which means until the day we leave, which is just over 70 now, it's likely there aren't going to be many discussions had with the EU on their soil with regards to what happens next. Later on this week, Johnson's going to meet Angela Merkel and French President Emmanuel Macron. The reason for this is because they are arguably, even though one is a lame duck and the other, yeah, his popularity isn't great, they are representatives of the two most powerful nations within the EU. I would include ourselves, but we're leaving so it doesn't really matter. You could argue, I guess, third place might go to Spain or Italy, but in truth, I don't really care. Now, in a letter to President Tusk of the European Council, he had called for the backstop to be removed from the withdrawal agreement that was reached between the EU and Theresa May, with the argument being it risked undermining the Northern Irish peace process. There are two sides to this. Either the current deal damages the Good Friday Agreement, or no deal damages the Good Friday Agreement. This is an argument that eventually descends into semantics. As far as I'm concerned, if you impose a hard border, you are to blame for damaging the Good Friday Agreement. The UK, even in the event of no deal, will not impose a hard border. Therefore, the only people who are risking the Good Friday Agreement are the EU. Now, their argument is to protect Irish interests within the EU. Well, you're doing that, and you're also undermining it. You two have to come to an agreement. Now, the suggestion was initially posited by Theresa May, that is, the backstop, which was agreed upon in the joint agreement back in December, I believe, of 2017, where we have to come up with all the ideas. Well, here's a new one for you. Take it off the table, or we walk away. At this present time, Boris Johnson is in fact preparing to leave the EU, which is why he is no longer going to attend meetings from September the 1st. To Johnson's credit, he has gone into these meetings with a somewhat positive attitude, believing that there was a real sense now that something needs to be done with the backstop, and that we can't get it through Parliament as it is. Although one would argue, could argue, should argue, it's unlikely anyway he could get any of it through Parliament anyway as Labour are leaning towards backing Remain because no deal is a threat. The SNP back Remain, and no one cares about the Liberal. My point essentially stands. There is no real majority in Parliament, therefore the inevitable is a legal default, which hurts everyone. And why is that? Because they can't reach a consensus. Because the majority of them serve a particular self-serving interest that outweighs what the people voted for. Johnson has reiterated the view that EU countries were less likely to make concessions to the UK as long as they think there's a possibility that Parliament will block Brexit, with the border being a matter that, quite frankly, has become a ginormous issue that many agree is a diplomatic sensitivity issue, with both the UK and EU agreeing that whatever happens, there should be no physical checks or infrastructure at the frontier. Well, no deal would risk that, However, I should now restate this. Many seem to forget that just because we leave without a deal doesn't mean a deal then cannot be agreed upon. Yes, it would take some time to reach a deal with the EU. That's the whole point of trade. It took seven years for them to get one with Canada. And they, as time of recording, still don't have one with America. I think we might have an edge on that one. In fact, we were the EU's ace in the hole because the US were more likely to trade with us than they are with any other nation. I wonder why that is. We all know there is a huge risk to the current government, parliament, everything. Democracy as a whole is going to take a big knock if Remain happens. 
because it is the most undemocratic thing to happen from a democratic vote where they lost. This is not a case of a do-over because there isn't a deal being agreed upon. We voted, and based on the laws put in place, you had time. Everyone blames Theresa May's red lines. I don't blame that. I blame her for being a shit negotiator. That's what I blame. I would also say I would blame Parliament for when they were welcomed in at the 11th hour to work on something, they came in with demands to remove no deal, which you can't remove. It is growing quite tiresome to continually be told that something has to be taken away that cannot be taken away. Now, this could apply to the EU with their refusal to back down on removing the backstop. Of course, we have to wait until Johnson has met Merkel and, I don't know, the Ponzi French guy, to work out whether or not there's a chance they could be swayed to remove it so that progress can be made. Of course, the deal still sucks. The backstop is just one issue. If it weren't for the fact that we become a vassal state for the majority of what's left of that deal anyway, the issue of the backstop wouldn't be as much of a problem. But it's one of many. Trade is a problem. Customs union, single market, all that nonsense, really. During a speech in Iceland, Chancellor Merkel was quoted as saying that once we have a practical solution to ensure that the Good Friday Agreement continues to apply, that we don't need the backstop, of course. However, much suspicion... When it comes to the EU and their practices, they do a lot of it behind closed doors, arises from the fact that they don't actually have to remove the backstop ever. They could keep it there in perpetuity and we would be stuck, without a legal guarantee that it would end at a set time, or with certain criteria met. It is still something that binds us. Welsh Labour, and I want to end on this, have said that they're going to back Remain if Jeremy Corbyn becomes Prime Minister because there is still an attempt in place when the session starts again in Parliament to try and create a caretaker Prime Minister with him at the front. Because what we really need is a leader that is so strong he has an assistant to tie his laces. An assistant so strong he needs encouragement from his backbenchers whenever he speaks. A leader so strong that he cannot think on the spot and relies on what is written in front of him. A leader so strong that when he slams you, you have to help him slam you. It's quite pitiful at this point. Mm -hmm.